What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course, you're watching TWA Motorsports. And today, back on the Trans Am, we're gonna see how far we can get. Um, look, I did some work off camera running the power for the fuel pump. Remember we bought the hot wire kit for the Racetronic fuel pump. I ran that, zip tied it along the fuel lines across the K-member, or not the K-member, but the transmission mount went up over the transmission and then followed kind of the um, uh, O2 sensor on the passenger side up by the AC to the battery. Okay, got that done. Next, I've got the Y pipe. I wanted to get that done because I didn't want the Y pipe in the way before we started on that. But I have got the um, speed engineering headers, uh, inch and seven eighths. This is the off-road Y pipe. So what I'm planning on doing is I don't have a lot of room under there to show you. It kind of pieces together. Uh, I'm gonna get it started and then I'll roll you under there and kind of show you what we got going on. But um, that's where we're gonna start, trying to get that on at least. Uh, then I'm probably gonna move to some grounds that I need to hook up and then under the hood. Well, this is not going well, guys. I told you I was going to uh, put this on. I've got it somewhat in place. The problem is, if you'll notice, it's hitting the drive shaft loop. It's also hitting here, so I think I think we're gonna have some adjustment to make and this thing looks to be shooting like off into the blue moon. I don't know. We may have to grab our cat back. I may have to scrap this all together. I may end up going with um, a trans mounted torque arm if this is going to be a problem. The other issue though is like, even if you go with the trans, like a transmission mounted or like a, uh, the one that mounts beside the transmission, obviously we're not gonna mount to it, but if I go with one of those and I still want to run a drive shaft loop, a lot of those bolt to this area here. So I don't really know what my next step is. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to move up to the front here. I've got several of the grounds that I haven't hooked up yet. So I don't know if you guys see all those. There's a couple over here on this side. Uh, I was trying to reroute those from the, in the original location. So you can see I got one here. Um, just trying to clean stuff up. There was a couple up top that I didn't love. So I'm gonna set this thing back down a little bit. I'm gonna work in my chair, trying to get these front grounds hooked up. Under here, we got a couple grounds, okay? We've got one that came out normally and bolted. Okay, this was like on the, on the side of the frame. I'm gonna put it up here. This is our old ABS unit. Remember, we deleted the ABS. Now, this one right here is the one that was normally up by the headlight. I didn't like it up there, so I moved it. I've got another one here, it looks like, wrapped up. I'm gonna move it out and ground it on the outside or put it on where the ABS bracket used to set, which is this guy right here. Um, so I'm gonna get these two grounds strapped down over here. Actually three, if you count the one that goes uh, to the block. Then on the other side, we've got a couple new ones. This one used to go up on the fender, kind of um, halfway down the fender. I didn't want it up there, so I moved it down the bottom. I'm gonna pin it right here. And then this is an additional one. Um, well, actually that's the positive for the new fuel pump, but there's also a negative. I'm gonna try to pin down here along the bottom. I've got all the grounds hooked up on the bottom. There was the one that used to, you guys remember the ones I'm talking about. One went here, one went there. That's the one that I looped through to the bottom on that side. This is the one I looped through the bottom on this side, as well as the one, there used to be one that came off of the ground and came up here and like, I don't know, look terrible, like pinned right here. I made a new one, you can see here, to go underneath to the bottom of the frame, so I don't have to look at that nastiness. But I went ahead and set the filter in, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I've got a new lid sitting over there that I'm gonna be putting in place. It is actually from uh, Hawks, third gen. I've got just a Spectra filter in here for now. I'm not real sure what I'm gonna use as far as filters go, but. I'm gonna get that in place, and then we're gonna use these that came with the uh, fuel pump kit to put in the battery. I'm not gonna hook the battery up yet, but let's go grab that new lid. And I've chosen to go with a truck uh, mass airflow sensor. So they're 80, I think they're 88 millimeter. Maybe they're a little bigger than that. Maybe they're 90 millimeter, but I'm gonna attempt to use my stock little scrunchie here, this guy. Um, I just don't think the, I mean, the SLP one's nicer and we may go to that later, but for like 60 bucks or whatever it costs, we'll just, we'll, let's try this for now. 
got that lid on took a little muscle in um, the mass airflow sensor fits great in the lid this however this stock I call it a scrunchie um, does not fit great and you can see how I don't necessarily know that it's even going to catch any of those ribs because it's so crunched up fits over the throttle body decent just over the mass airflow on this side it wasn't but when you run this they don't have the factory air IAT sensor okay so what you need is one of these I got this from Racetronics this is a uh, breakout so you can plug your factory mass airflow sensor plug and your factory IAT sensor into a newer style throttle body or uh, mass airflow sensor because everything's built into this one the uh, everything's in line so I'm going to zip tie that up out of the way of the belt guys we are we are closing in i may just go ahead and set the battery in here for now so i can get kind of my routing for this this is my fuel pump this is the fan i don't want it on all the time i actually want it on switched but i ran it up here with the fan thinking um i may route it over there somehow to the other side i'll probably go underneath this and just put it in the fuse block over there possibly but anyway we've got pretty good start here let's go grab the battery for now like i said i'm just going to set it in here that'll help me with the routing of the rest of this for now i'm going to lift this thing up i'm going to put a filter on it uh, i think i've got the right one here and we're going to start to put a little bit of fluid in this thing so i need to get some belts um which i'm hoping to snag tomorrow i'm hoping to have this in this video but yeah let's get let's lift it up Let's see if that filter will work because guys, I upgraded to a different pan. The stock pan on these cars takes a different filter than the upgraded pan. So this one is a newer one. It does not take the original filter. I'm gonna have to make a note of that. Um, but I'd like to go ahead and start dumping some transmission fluid in it. I'd like to dump some coolant in it. And I would like to at least get the oil filter on. I'm gonna pre-fill it. I'm gonna be using that uh, Valvoline VR1 for kind of a break-in situation. So uh, not normally the oil that I would run, but for now, that is what I'm going to be starting this thing with. I've got, like I said, I'm using 1030. Got the filter pre-filled. Let's screw it on there real quick. Actually, may pour a little more in it. Now that we got that on, I've got the radiator cap off. I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring some coolant in this thing. Um, probably gonna hit the power steering next. Or the transmission i'm kind of back and forth the transmission dipsticks right here i actually think it's supposed to be a little further over not as close to the middle as what it is but may have got moved a little bit with that intake here's what i'm using just prestone dex cool and distilled water mixing it up in my jug and uh, i'm just pouring in it a little at a time i could probably mix a little more here but it's easier to pour when there's less in it so we're just going to go through that cycle, mixing those two, pouring it in. Of course, we'll have to add more to it as we go, but uh, we'll at least top it off for now. Next, I'm going to move on to a little red line power steering fluid. That's what I like to use. Uh, we're going to fill this thing up. We're going to be real careful not to overfill it, but then we're going to have to move the steering wheel back and forth. I don't know if I'm going to do that right now, but for sure, let's see if we can go ahead and get some in it there is zero in it now because we replaced the lines we replaced the rack we replaced the pump we replaced the pump gear so yeah we're gonna have to fill it completely up so kind of the process fill it up all the way especially if you're doing what i'm doing where you're replacing all this stuff i filled it up all the way to the top so then what we do is we get in this thing and we roll the steering wheel back and forth i think i've got yeah i was gonna say i think i got the key on so that's half, then we'll go the other way. That'll be one. And I like to do this at least 10 times. So that would be one and a half. And then we'll go back and that will be two. And so I do this 10 times and then we check the fluid and we repeat until we get to a point where it's level on the cold if you don't fill it all the way up you're just going to be reintroducing bubbles in there so you could check it if you wanted like um, if it's completely dry like i filled it up and had to add a little bit more before showing you guys this but this is the process 
believe me this will keep you from having a milkshake and a bunch of bubbles in it when we first start it now as far as transmission fluid i'm going to grab my long funnel and i'm just using some house brand transmission fluid from a local parts store nothing special just dex3 that's what flt told me to use so let's get this out of here if i can do it there we go and uh let's get our funnel and get some fluid in this thing also got my belts in i ordered gates just a kind of a fan of gates i'll try to list those in the description this should be the stock size balancer i know it's an ati but it should be stock size so i'm hoping the stock size belt fits